It's an oasis in the otherwise vibrant city of Amsterdam, a community project that seems stuck in another time. Here, the left-wing ideals of the 1960s and 70s live on. Everyone pitches in without being paid. Some work in the organic garden, others in the kitchen or in the community store, where used clothes and housewares are given away for free. Katerina helps out twice a week in the store. She's a painter by profession. Here, she says she can live out her ideals. Yeah, left is on the side where heart is. So human and, and thinking about the nature and everything like, and not just waste everything. We're trying to be as uncommercial as possible. We're environmentally conscious, we're child-friendly and socially engaged. We take care of people here in the neighborhood. People can come here and drink a coffee or celebrate, even if they don't have much money. People here would like to change the world, but many seem to doubt that the revolution will happen at the ballot box. This man, Midas, doesn't know if he'll vote himself. He says there are no truly left-wing parties anymore. It doesn't matter how people vote, right, left or green. As soon as a party gets into power, they do the same as everyone else. They have to compromise. But not everyone has given up. Emil Rumer is the head of the Socialist Party, and he's making every effort to present his brand of politics as a relaunch for the left. The Socialists are hoping that their anti-austerity message will bring them to power in the upcoming elections. I'm not against saving money, but I am against saving until your country goes broke. We need healthy finances, but we can't let the economy and the social structure collapse. His message seems to be hitting home. In recent polls, the socialists have held a strong lead, for the first time in the country's history. He's on our side. He'll fight for old people and our pensions. We worked hard our whole lives. I deserve to get something out of that. I think he does what he promises. He's a person of substance with traditional values. And that's something we can really use here in this country. Rumor comes off as a solid man, almost conservative, without a trace of the defiant revolutionary. Nevertheless, the Dutch Socialist Party has its roots in communism. In the 1970s, it was known as a Marxist-Leninist party. Political scientist André Krovel studies the motivations of Dutch voters. He says the socialist new, more moderate image has been a crucial element of the party's recent popularity. They have moderated their stances. They were a communist-Leninist party in the 1970s and they've basically transformed into a version of social democracy. And that has made them, I think, attractive to a broader electorate. But here in the alternative heart of Amsterdam, some feel betrayed by the party's new orientation. They miss the days when politicians had the courage to take on the system at a fundamental level. There isn't a single big party in the Netherlands or in Europe that has any idea how to solve the crisis. They're all trying to keep the system going to make sure the powerful people stay in power. They just pump more air into the system to keep it running however they can. There's enough money to go around, but it's divided up the wrong way. There's enough food, there's enough land, but a few people own it all. Something has to change. But the politicians prefer to scare us. They only care about staying in power. Many people here say that's true of Emil Roma and the socialists as well. They're part of the system. In this neighborhood, people prefer to act on their own initiatives. In the courtyard garden, Midas and his fellow workers plant organic vegetables and herbs. Their commitment to leftist values is apparent in the neighborhood restaurant. A three-course meal costs five euros, which doesn't leave much room for profit. Mm -hmm.